एस टीवी इंग्लिश द सोल्यूशन फॉर ह्यूमैनिटी Islam versus terrorism. That there is anything in Islam that would underwrite acts of terrorism. All I can find in the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad peace be upon him are acts versus terrorism. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We have Sheikh Yusuf Estes. He'll be talking on Islam, terrorism and the world. Before I turn the mic over to Sheikh Estes, I would like to give a brief introduction on him. Sheikh Yusuf Estes was born to a very religious American Christian Protestant family. A Christian chaplain who accepted Islam in July 1991, 13 years ago while trying to convert an Egyptian Muslim to Christianity. He was previously involved with transport business and owned a music company apart from preaching Christianity. I request Sheikh Yusuf Estes uh, to give the lecture, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. Wa ala alihi wa sabbi ajma'in ashadu wa la ilaha illa allahu wa atu la shrikallah. Wa ashadu wa muhammadin abduhu wa rasul ma'bad. First of all, I want to extend the salams, the greetings of peace to all of my brothers and sisters here in Bangalore, India, from our country. Uh, we have many Muslims, I don't know if you know this, in the United States of America. In fact, many of them came from right here in India. And all of them want to be sure that I give big salams to everybody. So, inshallah, I'll do that right now. Salaam alaikum rahmatullah. The second thing is that I turned out to be a real Muslim after all. And how is that? Because I noticed the difference in timing. In my country, Britain is the same way. Everybody's real punctual, punctual. They got a big thing about being on time. And you know what? I must be a Muslim because I was late tonight. <laughs> we have in our country what we call Eastern Standard Time, EST. Then we have CST, Central Standard Time. MST, Mountain Standard Time. Then we have PST, Pacific Standard Time. And then we got one for the whole country for the Muslims there. It's called AST, Arabic Standard Time, which is about an hour behind everybody else. In any case, the subject tonight really is a very serious one. So I think it's important for us to pay very close attention to this subject. The subject is about Islam versus terrorism. Usually, I see them right on the banners. It will say Islam and terrorism. But I want you to be sure you understand versus terrorism. When there's going to be a fight or some kind of a bout, a boxer is going to come to town and they're going to fight it out, they put the name of one and then V.S. and then the name of the other one. This will be, for instance, Folsom versus Shylock. And that means these two are fighting against each other. So this is why I want to say Islam versus terrorism because certainly one fights the other. In our country, there is a very big misconception about Islam versus terrorism. I'm sure that there's a certain amount of that all over the world because of the tremendous hype that is being received everywhere through the media. And so the first thing to do is talk about the media. Media is a way of communicating ideas and information. And it's a very important thing for all of us. This is something that's been going on since human beings knew how to speak. It's for people to go 
into places and share information from other places. This is not new at all. As a matter of fact, that's how Islam spread, exactly through media versus the sword, meaning Islam didn't spread by a sword. It spread by media. Media or stories is called hadith. All right? In Islam, we have a science of media or hadith, and it helps us to determine whether or not the information being presented to us is accurate. For instance, if someone says to me that Abdullah said to Abdurrahman and he said to Aisha and she said to Sheikh Jafar and Sheikh Jafar said to me, the only person you're looking at is me. How do you know I'm telling the truth? Well, wait a minute, hold on. Sheikh Jaffer's sitting right there, and you saw him just say something to me a minute ago, so maybe it could be possible. The other people are not here. The only way we'd be able to check that out now is to ask him, what is the veracity of Aisha, the one who told it to him? Do you know Aisha? And if he said, well, not really, then how valuable would that information be? Likewise, if we ask Aisha if she's here, we said to her, what about Abdurrahman and Abdullah? And if she says, I don't know who they are, or I just met them yesterday, then what is the value of this hadith or media? Pretty much nothing, okay? But for sure, you want to check out the one who's talking to you. And if you find that this man is given to prevarication, meaning he lies, then what's the value of anything he says, right? So this is how we should be today. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hujurat, chapter 49 of the Quran, Allah is very clear on this subject. He warns us, it's in uh, 49 verse 6, O oh, you who believe, Ya'yuladina Amanu, if a fatik, and this is a disobedient person or liar, comes to you with information or news, then you have to ascertain the veracity or attest to it to find out if it's real. Unless you find yourself harming people in ignorance and afterwards you will regret what you have done. Now I want you to think the next time somebody tells you something, who are they? Who is the one speaking to you? If it's in a newspaper, who is the journalist? If it's on television, who are these people? And then who are their sponsors? Who are the ones having them say these words? Are they saying all of the truth or just what fits in a five minute segment? Are they prejudiced? In my country, we have some people that are prejudiced, meaning they like themselves so much, the group they don't like, they will lie on them. Even if it's not true, they say it anyway because, oh well, they're African American, so we'll say this about them. So I don't know, do you have prejudice here in India? Does people ever do that? Ah, oh, okay. So the first thing to do is realize if you know for sure they've lied about something else, throw everything they say. If what they say is questionable or maybe not all of the truth, then at least think about what you're hearing. But for sure, if you know something to be the opposite, if they tell you it's light outside right now, what do you consider that? Are you gonna consider the obvious or are you gonna try to say, well, maybe they meant you know, it's almost light, or maybe they meant there's lights over there somewhere, or, you know, let's be realistic. Tell it like it is, okay? That's the first part. The next part deals with what some people do. Some people do bad things in the United States of America. But does that make everybody in the United States of America a bad person? Some people do bad things right here in Bangalore, India. 
But does that mean everybody here is bad? is the mother of all worships. Salah is your appointment with Allah. Salah is the safe haven of the believer. Salah is your gateway to happiness. Salah is the wish of the deceased. So join me for Salah Revisited and discover what you've been missing out on. Understand the remarkable guidelines that help in making our Salah rewarding and acceptable in Salah Revisited, next on Peace TV. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hujurat, chapter 49 of the Quran, Allah is very clear on this subject. He warns us, it's in uh, 49 verse 6. O you who believe, Ya Yuladina Amanu, if a fatik, and this is a disobedient person or liar, comes to you with information or news, then you have to ascertain the veracity or attest to it, to find out if it's real. Unless you find yourself harming people in ignorance and afterwards you will regret what you have done. Now I want you to think the next time somebody tells you something, who are they? Who is the one speaking to you? If it's in a newspaper, who is the journalist? If it's on television, who are these people? And then who are their sponsors? Who are the ones having them say these words? Are they saying all of the truth or just what fits in a five-minute segment? Are they prejudiced? In my country, we have some people that are prejudiced, meaning they like themselves so much, the group they don't like, they will lie on them. Even if it's not true, they say it anyway because, oh well, they're African-American, so we'll say this about them. So, I don't know. Do you have prejudice here in India? Does people ever do that? Ah, oh, okay. So the first thing to do is realize if you know for sure they've lied about something else, throw everything they say. If what they say is questionable or maybe not all of the truth, then at least think about what you're hearing. But for sure, if you know something to be the opposite, if they tell you it's light outside right now, what do you consider that? Are you going to consider the obvious or are you going to try to say, well, maybe they meant, you know, it's almost light or maybe they meant there's lights over there somewhere or, you know, let's be realistic. Tell it like it is. Okay? That's the first part. The next part deals with what some people do. Some people do bad things in the United States of America. But does that make everybody in the United States of America a bad person? Some people do bad things right here in Bangalore, India. But does that mean everybody here is bad? And often, just as when I was in Pakistan, the residents will speak harshly about themselves without realizing it. And say things like, 
Everybody here in my country is corrupt. There's nothing but corruption. There's no honest people. And you say, really? Are you sure? Yes, there's no honest people. That's right. They're all liars, right? Well, for sure, the only one I know about is you, and you just said you were a liar. Therefore, everybody must be honest except you. But we don't think of it that way. We don't realize we're including ourselves, our mothers. Are you going to let somebody call your mother a liar? You just did. When you said everybody in my country is a liar. And it's not true, is it? But there are some bad people in every single city on this earth, but it doesn't make all the earth bad. Likewise, there are some people who call themselves Muslim and they do some bad things, but that has nothing to do with Islam. So now let's find out right now and right here exactly what is Islam versus terrorism. I'll begin with the word Islam itself. The first word Islam needs to be understood in the language that it comes from. In the Arabic language, Islam comes from this root, Salama. And from this, many words come. And Islam is one that contains other words in it. Often I hear Muslims say, Islam is peace. However, Islam is more than peace. It contains four other beautiful words that equal the real peace. First of all, there is surrender. Like when somebody comes in with guns and they tell you, give up, you give up, I surrender. That's the first word. Second word, submit. This is when you're going to sign an agreement and you're going to do what it says. It's called the shahada. The third word is obey. That means you're going to do what you said you would do when you signed the paper. And then the next word is sincerity. It means that you're going to do what you said you were going to do, and you're going to do it because you know you should, whether anybody knows it or not, and whether anybody likes it or not. You're sincerely going to do what you said. And then finally, you do it in peace. And then you receive peace from as-salam. And that's the name of Allah, the peace. So it means a peace between you and your creator and sustainer. And it means a peace inside of you and a peace around you, no matter what's happening, because you know this is from your Lord. It does not mean peace on earth, goodwill to men, something that's said very frequently at Christmas time, like now. But we would like to see that as well. But for sure, Islam is about the relationship of a human being and their Lord. The second word I want to talk about, the verses, in this corner, weighing 240 pounds, the other word called terrorism. Okay? What is terrorism? What is it? Of course, it comes from the word terror. What is terror? Check it out in your dictionary. It's not a good word, is it? Terror. It's to put fear into something. A, a terror is even more than fear. Fear, you're afraid of something. Terror is when it is beyond normal fear. Beyond normal fear. A terror of something. Okay? Now, did either of those words sound like they match? Islam, terrorism. Does it fit? Linguistically, you have to say, no, these don't fit. Next, let's look at the teachings of Islam, as Dr. Jafar Sheikh Yudhiris was just telling us, about accepting something once it's established. You've established something, you move to the next, next, and the next. Once you establish in your mind, with no doubt, there is a God. There's no doubt in your mind there's a God. And most of the people on this earth today do believe that there is a God. They have a different perception, but the majority of all the earth-bound, air-breathing mammals called human beings accept that there really is a God that created them and takes care of them. Okay? But once you accept that there's a God, then you accept that this Quran could only have come from that God 
And in this Quran, it clearly states that you are not a believer until you have made Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a judge in the matters where you in dispute. Once you've understood that, and by the way, if you want the reference, that's chapter 4, verse 65. An Nisa, verse 65. Once you've established in your mind that Muhammad sallallahu is in fact the one who brought this Quran from his Lord, you don't have any option in the matter. You take it and you buy it wholesale, complete, and semina wa atana. We hear and we obey. Now, that is the concept being used to say Muslims will do anything. Well, we will. That's true. If that's the accusation, guilty. If you're saying we'll do anything that our Lord has ordered us to do, we'll sure try. So if that's your accusation, then yes, guilty. Guilty of absolutely following what our Lord has ordered us to do. Otherwise, we wouldn't be a believer. But the next thing some very evil people have done, regardless if they call themselves Muslim or Christian or atheist, it's a very evil thing when you lie against the law and his messenger. Because clearly Allah says in the Quran, hated to Allah is that you lie, you say what you don't do, that you prevaricate, that you misrepresent something. It's not acceptable. Many of the articles being written against Islam quote one part of a verse and then mistranslate it, corrupt it, twist it, take it totally out of context, or use translators' mistakes. But I'm going to share with you that having been a Christian for nearly 50 years, a very dedicated Christian, very much loving the Lord, I very much still to this minute love Jesus the Christ, because that tells us right in here, this is confirmation of Jesus is right here. I have no doubt in my mind, after studying this in the Arabic text, that there is anything in Islam that would underwrite acts of terrorism. All I can find in the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad, peace be upon him, are acts versus terrorism. There isn't enough time in one little lecture to cover this subject in detail. That's why I mentioned our website, so you can pick it all up over there. But quickly, I'm going to give you a couple of pointers and let you consider for yourself. The first one is when someone says, well, you know those Muslims have been ordered to kill all the Christians and Jews wherever they find them. Wherever you find them, kill them, it says in the newspaper. And I live in Washington, D.C. area. We get the Washington Post. I pick it up. I look in there. I say, whoa, where's that in the Quran? I call him up. I say, who is the journalist that wrote this thing? Where did you get that? I'm not familiar with the verse. Oh, you know, the whole Quran's loaded with stuff like that. I said, really? Just give me one reference. They said, well, verse 191 in Surah Baqarah, the chapter called the cow. Well, it does start out exactly like they said, and kill them wherever you find them. Whoa, oh my God, oh my God. And kill them wherever you find them. I'm looking at the translation called the Noble Quran by Dr. Musan Khan and Dr. Muhammad Hilali, published by Dar Salaam. That's the one I use all the time. It says it, by God, they're right. And kill them wherever you find them. Whoa. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, did you hear Christians and Jews in there? I must have missed that. Let's go back and look again. And kill them wherever you find them. That could be talking about bugs. Come to think about it, it just says and. Wait a minute. When was the last time you started a sentence with the word and? Let me check this out in Arabic. How many of you know Arabic? Anybody know Arabic? Anybody? Okay, well, there's a thing in Arabic that looks like a comma. It's kind of round and has a tail on it called a wow. Okay, that's the word and in Arabic. It's a conjunction to say this and this. Doesn't necessarily mean plus, like one plus one, but it's an and. Let's see if it says that. Wa. Yep, there it is. There's an and right there. 
วาคาทิลู I just give you the first two words. That's the ones they're quoting in the newspaper. That's my point. But when was the last time you started a sentence with "and"? It means there's something right before that, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Well, I don't like it when people do that, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. I don't like it when the men in Islam start out saying "wa cool" in chapter 24, verse 31. They begin to tell the women about lowering their gaze and wearing hijab. It says "wa cool." Because they don't want to mention the verse before it that said, "Cool, say to the believing men to lower their gaze, to guard their private parts." Uh, they don't want to mention the men have a responsibility in this deal too. Friendly message by Dr. Zakir: Islam prohibits killing of innocent human beings. Every day, innocent human beings are being killed in different parts of the world. Most religions condemn the killing of innocent human beings, but Islam goes a step further and says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al-Maidah, chapter number five. Verse number thirty-two: If anyone kills a human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it would be as if he has killed the whole of humankind. It does not stop here, but continues. And if anyone save a single human life, it would be as if he has saved the life of the entire humankind. Remember. Please do not kill a single innocent human being, but rather save the whole of humankind by saving human lives. Human life is precious. Beast TV, the solution for humanity. Muslims are being targeted. Muslims are called a fundamentalist. As extremists, they call as terrorists. All sorts of terrorism in which innocent human beings are killed have to be condemned, whether done by Muslim or non-Muslim. Who has the monopoly on terrorism? And according to me, terrorism is a monopoly of the politicians. Whenever terrorist attacks are talked about, most often they are talked about Muslim terrorists. Why? Dr. Zakir Naik speaks on: Is terrorism a Muslim monopoly? In Truth Exposed, starting from this Tuesday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecasts at 7:30 a.m. UK on Peace TV.